That's what I'm gonna focus on. We get it, we get it. I'm Andrew Stack, and I'm a war correspondent. Holy shit. In 1999, I was in Indonesia when the country was on the brink of civil war. That month of living dangerously. We had to make a decision. Go east to cover the fighting, or go west to skip the entire mess and carry on with some adventures. Oh man, it's gonna be a tough one. We chose Sumatra. She wants to be on camera. That is one heck of a mushroom. That's Paul. He's not kidding around. Are these your cows? Special ingredient, magic mushrooms. No, 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 I don't want any. To recap, Randy is teaching us about Lake Toba's magic mushroom scene. Tell me some of the ways you prepare it. Do you make magic mushroom pancakes? <laughs> magic mushroom tea? What, what, what different ways? Magic mushroom sandwich? No, magic mushroom tea, magic mushroom omelet, and also you can eat by fresh. Like this. Wow, they're legendary magic mushrooms. Man, look at these. These are fresh. Did you just pick these? I just picked. My friend just eat magic mushroom. Giles Meganson is at Randy's for his first ever shroom experience. Just a little sort of tickly feeling. Lots of nice colors. <laughs> What'd you do, tea? Or eat them straight? Omelette. An omelette? Nice. What's your job? What's my job? I have no job. You know, like, I make money by myself. Like, yeah, I sell me mushroom. But so you're a magic mushroom distributor? Yeah. You're a distributor of magic mushrooms? Yeah. FBI? We're not FBI, but I got a question for you. Are these legal in Indonesia? Illegal. They're illegal? Yeah. But nobody stops you from doing this? Nobody know if what is magic mushroom. Local police turn a blind eye, but they are not legal. The same laws that apply to marijuana also apply to hallucinogenic mushrooms. The maximum punishment could include the death penalty. Randy prefers to dance to his own narrative. Actually, this is not illegal. It's not illegal. It's not illegal because you can you can find in the mountain, you know. It's not illegal because they grow naturally in the mountains? No. No. The seed this come from the buffalo seed, you know. <laughs> in America, kids are told to walk the dog. In Indonesia, they walk the cow. The water buffalo is 20 times larger than this little boy, but when you got an animal by this little piece of tissue right between the nostrils, he'll come along. And what do you suppose he thinks of us? Look at these dumbass tourists. They're gonna have Indonesian movies that make fun of Americans for carrying cameras. The climate is perfect for the mushrooms to grow wild in the midst of nearby mountains. Are these your cows? Do you think he knows he's involved in Tuk Tuk's psychedelic business? Randy doesn't sell his mushrooms by weight. He sells them by how long you want your hallucinations to last. Depends on you, how, how many hours? How many hours you want? Just picked. A day's worth of hallucinations. Enough to send two people to the moon. How many mushrooms did they put in there? Um, four small ones, about that big. Which, if my calculations are correct... <laughs> Very pleasant. He's in good company. Randy doesn't just play a shroom distributor on TV. He's also the shroom club president. Basic to hip is the concept of digging to dig. Yeah, yeah, and after go. As tuned out as Randy's clubhouse may be, even here, the violence in Timor pops up on the radar. Kind of sucks that that's happening. Timor should be part of your country, right? Not far from here in Aceh, Muslims and Christians have had a long-standing and often bloody feud. 
Tuk Tuk is Christian, and many, like Randy and his boys, mentally combat the violence by practicing mellowness. Sunday service is treated by locals as the social event of the week. Our gang wants an update on the situation in East Timor to decide on their next best move. I'm going. You New Zealand, you boom, 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 boom. If I really had my stick against Indonesia, do you think I'd be exploring your country? So we all head down to the local watering hole. Men armed with machetes and automatic weapons were on the streets. In Dili, there were reports of gunfire while looted homes and shops burned. Thousands of people in East and West Timor could die of starvation. Whatever may be happening outside Lake Toba, it's certainly not influencing how we're perceived in Tuk Tuk. Is it money? No, I don't need money. Locals here seem completely indifferent to our nationality. Good afternoon, ladies. Where do you come from? America. America? Yes. Okay. I'm trying to think about that. It's like, I'm not a journalist. I'm just a surfer dude, brah. Do you have six of those shirts? <laughs> Since we're on the subject of military and not far from Vietnam, Keith tells us he would have been an American if it hadn't been for the Vietnam War. My father had just finished his uh, master's degree in microbiology from the University of California at Davis and was drafted to work in the biological weapons division for the U.S. Army and said, forget it, we're leaving town, packed up and went to Canada. Back at the pub, our gang inadvertently gets pulled into a retreat of Indonesians visiting from Sumatra's capital, Medan. Can you guess who's who? Their stiffness quickly fades. They were really pumping the sounds. It was just such a contrast to everything else we'd seen in in Indonesia. In the morning, enough is enough. Hold on for a sec. Sound off again. You gonna chase him now? Yeah, I gotta go over the fence to do it though. He's gotta come back over to our side or I can't do it. I don't wanna be chasing this lady's chickens. No, why wouldn't you want to do that? It's not nice to chase a lady's chickens, didn't you know that? The tiny chickadees may be cute and cuddly, but first thing in the morning, there are limits to how much I can take of the adult roosters. No more cock-a-doodle-doo. He's clucking now. Since the situation in Timor is still uncertain, Paul and I pack up and start heading towards Medan. No long goodbyes. We all wish each other luck and happy lives. Hello. Hello, how's it going? Good morning. Good morning. On the Toba Ferry, we run into Kiwi Tim and Canadian Aaron. Oh, you Kiwi, yeah. Just arriving. Not surprisingly, they're also looking for a mellow place to duck out of sight. What nationality do you guys tell them that you are in the midst of this crisis? Uh, what have we got under? Anything but Australians and Kiwis at the moment. Some South Africans is a good tip we've just had. Pretending to be South African has the desired effect. South Africa. Where did come from? South like? Africa. And I don't even change my accent to tell you. They can't discern the accent, but they don't believe me. Chances are they think I'm Australian too. No matter. We don't want to spend a lot of time in Medan, so the first thing we do is check the bus yard. Where are you going? Bukit Luang. Where are you going? Luang. <clears throat> I continue to bait pickpockets wherever we go. 
That's it. That's it. Remember Wendra? He gave me a note to place inside my wallet as we travel around. I hope this brings you as much happiness as it's brought me. Saya mengharapkan ini membawa kebahagiaan bagi kamu. Andy. No one ever takes the bait, but you'll notice the wallet hanging out wherever I go. Right now, our real mission is to catch an onward bus to Bukit Luang and Lucerne National Park. Yes. We missed the morning bus, but there'll be another tonight. Eight o'clock. Tonight? Yeah. Neti Pakpahan is a Medan local. You want some blue bread? Green. She befriends us and offers advice. Mmm, just like mom used to make. <laughs> my rule of thumb when traveling is to keep my true nationality to myself, especially in places where groups have open animosity towards Americans. It's okay if I tell someone I'm American. America. America. Yes. But if they ask me, it's best to play it safe. In Nettie's case, she's a friendly. Nettie wants us to meet her friend Marina, who speaks fluent English. She suggests we all meet this afternoon at the Western Mall downtown. I come here for the fresh air myself. You never do get used to the smell, do you? Medan's air is thick with pollution. If you need to fuel up, full service gas stands abound. Parts of the city are overrun by sprawling poverty. The wealth disparity slaps you in the face. Right next door are million dollar compounds. Lots of ailments are attributed to polluted water, including polio. Remember Eddie from Nias? What a night, my man. The gutters from these neighborhoods drain into the Delhi River. Polluted water is reused downstream for cooking and showering. The poor in these slums don't have sanitation options. We've got to figure out where the worst part of town is so we can go there. We're trying to find the most polluted section of town so we can show you how bad the problem becomes downriver. Three, two, one. The key to successful travel is staying healthy, and the key to staying healthy is not consuming pathogenic bacteria, i.e. eating shit. Sounds easy? Well, it's not. Do it again. First time is the charm, but it's always best to do it twice for a backup in case there's a glitch in the video. <clears throat> she wants to be on camera. You want to do my stand-up with me? I wasn't planning to address Medan's prostitution problem because it would require an episode of its own. The subject has been covered in depth by many sources with little effect. It too is caused by basic economics. I didn't realize we were standing at a focal intersection. It's one in the afternoon, but this intersection belongs to her. She doesn't understand English, and I can't quite communicate that we only want to shoot this stand-up and move along. And now we got a crowd. You guys can go. We're just... The shot doesn't quite work with her in it. The key to successful travel is staying healthy, and the key to staying healthy is not consuming. The world is a broken place, and there may be no better way to illustrate it than this. I changed the camera angle. Sounds easy? Well, it's not. But I'm starting to get frustrated. I'm not going to be able to do it with her here. I blew that. Do it again. What am I saying? If I can say this, not, not, not eating shit. Then our window of opportunity goes from bad to worse. Overhead, Indonesian F-100s are making a show of force to let the world know Indonesia won't be pushed around in East Timor. The key to staying healthy is not eating pathogenic bacteria. Sounds easy? Well, it's not. Yippee hooray! We got it. What's your profession? Uh, teacher. Teacher? Yes. Ever since I was refused entry to China in the mid-90s because I was a journalist, I typically cast myself as a teacher. What? I am. I'm teaching you current events right now. <coughs> and if you're not used to Medan's subtleties, you could catch one of those waterborne illnesses another way. 
Walking on the sidewalk is no problem during the daytime, but when nighttime falls, you better watch your step or you could end up in the sewer. Sometimes you've got to look away from the action to find the action. Bye-bye. We decide to tour Medan low and slow. Coming up, our transport may be low, but it's not slow. Everyone seems to think we're Australian, and we want to know one thing. Why do you hate Australians? With that, we're finally off to Bukit Luang to hang out with the orangutans. There you go. 